Hello. Welcome to this lecture video where we will be covering many key concepts that will form a foundation to what we will build upon as we continue our course. So I guess that the first and most obvious question that we should tackle is that how do we define the term biology? After all, even your textbook is named by simply using this term. Well, the word biology can be defined as the scientific study of life. There are two important parts to this definition. Firstly, biology is about living things. So we are looking at living organisms, considering many aspects of theirs. These could include, for example, the physical structure, chemical processes, molecular interactions, physiological mechanisms, development, and evolution. All of these are characteristics of organisms, and in particular, living organisms. So it's fair to say that the field of biology is all about life. Another important aspect that we will end up noticing is that biology is a science, a natural science to be precise. So sciences are all about trying to build up knowledge and trying to understand certain topics. This is achieved by using systematic methodology, which is founded on evidence. This part of the definition suggests to us that in addition to studying life and living things, the field of biology does this in a well-defined and systematic manner. What we see on this slide is our planet, the Earth. As viewed from the distance, let's take a moment to consider what do we actually see here? Well, if you are anything like me, I would probably dare to guess that you might have mentioned the sea. In fact, about 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by the seas. As a side note, I do want to mention that Surprisingly, only about 5% of the seafloor has been mapped. Let's compare this to the surface of the moon. Can you guess how much of it has been mapped up to this date? Well, interestingly, and this is a brand new thing for this year, the entire surface of the moon has been now mapped. This article is from May 2020, so very recent. Isn't it amazing that we have a complete high-definition map of the Moon's surface, yet the seafloor of our very own planet has still not been fully studied? But going back to what we were earlier looking at, what else do we see when we look at the Earth from the distance? Well, we probably can also spot some large forests. And we all know that these, especially rainforests, are vital for the life on the Earth. They are often described as the lungs of the Earth, as this is where the major amount of oxygen, which is essential for life, is produced and carbon dioxide is bound to. We can also see mountains, higher projections on the Earth's surface. In fact, the geology of the Earth is constantly undergoing changes. And we might be also able to support some clouds. Again, water, but this time in another form. Many astronauts describe that seeing the deserts on the surface of the Earth is something that they did not expect in terms of the intensity of the colors. So we can see those too. And of course, closer to the ice poles, which is again, water in another form. So what we really see here is, I would argue, ample evidence of life and things that are essential for life, based on our modern understanding. In fact, all living things are made about 70% of water. So that must be essential for life. But in reality, what we see here is not the only or even the most numerous form of life on the Earth. Single-celled organisms, known as prokaryotes, such as bacteria, are found everywhere on the Earth, in multiple
much greater quantities than multicellular organisms, which are much bigger in size. Say, for example, plants and animals, which make a group of eukaryotes. We will be discussing about prokaryotes and eukaryotes later in this course, but for now, I simply want to point out that it is these small things that by far outnumber the larger living things that we are often spontaneously think of when we think of living things. And it turns out that these small microorganisms were also the first form of life to appear on the Earth. In fact, prokaryotes first appeared some 3.8 billion years ago. The earliest life in a form of a single-celled organism started in water. In comparison, plants and animals are only fairly recent addition. They first appeared some 100 to 200 million years ago. And then when it comes to the humans, our existence on the Earth has really been only a blink of an eye in comparison to these. First humans appeared some 2.5 million years ago. But I want us to come back to this view of the Earth for a bit more. The reason why the Earth is such a unique planet is that, based on our current knowledge, out of all the planets in our solar system, it is the only one that is suited for sustaining life. So that's why the Earth is a good analog for the studying of biology. Earlier we defined biology as the scientific study of life, but at this point I think that we are ready to expand on this definition. Based on this expanded definition, the field of biology also includes the various interactions of different forms of life, as well as interactions of life and the environment around it. So how do you feel about this definition? Personally, I would have to say that to me it sounds a little vague, to be honest. And I think that this is because biology covers such a broad range of life. Remember, we are looking from the microbiology to studying an entire planet. So this brings us to your activity for this week. And this week, I would like you to look at the fact that biology is everywhere. And biology is also constantly in the news. I would like you to find a news piece. It can be a traditional article or an online piece or in form of TV or whatever you think of. But this piece should be about biology. And it is important for me that it genuinely interests you. It could be, for example, about sports science or medical condition or about pets, whatever you can think of. I would like you to post a reference to this piece and provide a brief, say, a paragraph outlining the piece. You should also explain why you found this news story interesting and how and why it is something that resonates with you. Here is an example that I have used in the past. So in 2017, BBC and many other news reported about a peer-reviewed article that was published in The Lancet, which is one of the very well-respected scientific journals covering many fields of biology. And this article was the first time that a new organ had been identified in the field of anatomy. If you think about it, anatomy is a field which goes back to the 3rd century before Christ, at least. So it is an old field, and you would hardly think that there is anything new being found in this field these days. But it so happens that the mesentery was defined for the first time as an organ on its own just a few years ago. To me, this shows that biology and even the most established fields of biology are very much a living science. There are new things being discovered all the time, 
even in something as well established as in the area of human anatomy. So if you find all the resources that you so you will find all the resources that you will need to complete this activity with this learning module. Just make sure to post your answer to this activity so you get the points to the activity. Well, here's the next thing that I wanted to mention. We have already seen this picture of it here. So this scanning electron picture of a bacterial cell called E. coli. I think you might have heard about this before, right? bacteria are normal residents in our digestive tracts. There they aid up in the absorption of the vitamin K and other nutrients. But that's not probably when and why you may have heard about this in the news. Instead, every now and then it pops up in the news as the virulent strains are sometimes responsible for disease outbreaks. And if you're still wondering what this, what kind of disease, well, E. coli can give you the poops. Actually, we use E. coli in some of our labs of this course. So this is where the importance of lab safety comes as an important factor. Remember, that was our very first lab that you learned about, right? So you might want to know about how to safely work in a lab, because otherwise you might end up with the poops, for example. This is where we will wrap up this first part of our lecture videos for this module. Do not forget to join me later after you have completed the discussion forum activity on the piece of news that addresses biology as we continue this module's lectures. I look forward to seeing you then.